Listen, brevs. This is four tips to survive in the hood. And why am I doing these videos? Because they go viral on TikTok whenever I share my story about how I survived growing up in the hood and what I do everyday living in the hood, right? When I say hood, I don't mean like black people. I don't mean just ghetto, whatever people may assume. I just mean anywhere there's poverty, which I, uh, the, in Paris, it can be poverty. People be getting robbed, Kim K got robbed, whatever, right? Hood, no matter, listen. So I had to throw that out there for some people. But I live in Detroit. I grew up in a rough neighborhood, for those who don't know my story. And I survived the street wars of Detroit. I had a teenage mom, lost my dad when I was four. And I grew up in the hood hood. But now I live in an amazing neighborhood in Detroit. I don't plan on going nowhere soon unless my stuff blow up and I move to L.A. But I'll still have a home in Detroit, multiple homes, because I'm getting into real estate. With that being said, if you want to move here, or if you already live here, or if you're a kid that go to school here, here's how to survive. Now, this is no specific order. But number one, mind your own business. Listen, we see all these videos of Karens everywhere. Let me take a coffee break. We see all these Karens going around, putting their phones up to people, calling the police and all that. I get it. You know, you feel like, hey, I pay taxes. I'm a citizen, whatever, right? Why are you doing this when you should not be doing that, right? I, sometimes, you know, I get it, but if somebody's a kid not getting hurt, you know, um, or, you know, somebody who's innocent isn't getting hurt. Like, if some dudes shooting dice in front of their house on the sidewalk, let them guys shoot dice. Like, whatever happens, happens, right? That's that's just my business. That's just what I, my opinion, right? Um, how many times do we know, you know, we see people going into a store and following people around because they think they're stealing? Those are the kind of things that they get you hurt if you're living in the hood. Just because it's like... You walking up on people, you don't know what them people got, you don't know what they doing, you don't know where they coming from, and you in the store looking around. People do that to me when I'm in the suburbs, right? So, but you also get them people in the hood, them old ladies or them people that come here and, you know, or they people from the suburbs, they come here, buy a house, and somebody's in the store, they think, even if they are stealing, like, I mean, I was gonna, I was gonna say tell the clerk, but whatever, whatever you do, right? But just don't be in that person's face, because they can be dangerous. Number two. Watch your surroundings, man. Listen, we're in an era of people texting and phones and like, you know what I mean? Like people just be at a gas station with their head down just on their phone. Like, and that's a prime way. If somebody's desperate, they hungry, they're looking for an opportunity, they're going to see you and they're going to see you on your phone. I done been uh, in a situation where somebody tried to carjack me and my grandma. Somebody hopped in the car. I got the video about it. I'll link it in the description. Um... Somebody try to hop in and crawl on us. I got my, I'm looking down. I'm not paying attention. So watch your surroundings. And it's always good to watch your surroundings anywhere you at. It don't even matter. Just be aware. You know, you can get hit by. It's times I almost got hit by a bus like two, three times. I saved somebody's life from getting hit by a bus. You know how you standing on the curb? And they're like, you're not paying attention. And the bus just, because they, they go right on the curb. And that junk is dangerous. Like, I wonder how many people get hit by buses a year. Because that junk, it almost happens so many times. So... Yeah, number three. What is number three? Like, I'm, I'm just spitballing off top. Number three, what, what is it? Don't be at gas stations in Coney Islands at night, like, just chilling there. Get in, get out. And this is the Detroit edition for those who don't know what Coney Island is. Listen, Coney Island is a place where you can go get food in Detroit. Um, Amazing spot for us Detroiters. Why is it dangerous? Um... It's because it's late night, you know, there's not a lot of police everywhere. There is now in Detroit because of all, you know, they trying to really, there's a lot of building and development in the city. Um, crime, weight, crime rate is dropping. It's an amazing place to be right now, right? So uh, if you live in the right spot in Detroit. So there's a lot of police around, right? But late, the later it is, one in the morning, Coney Islands are 24 hours. It's not as much traffic. And it's a spot where it's open, where, you know, people can sell things, you know what I mean? Um, there's a lot of transactions, there's a lot of stuff going on, you know, at night. And also, it just be people up there, it's like the hangout spot. I don't know if you've seen BMF and Big Meech, like, or whatever, where you see them hanging out and all that at the corner. It's the hangout spot, too, because it's open late. You catch an op in there, stuff going on. Nine times out of ten in Detroit, stuff be personal, you know what I mean? Like, people be, oh, if you walk there, you're going to get hurt. No, some stuff, a lot, most of the stuff be personal. If you don't got beef with somebody, whatever, so you can be in a Coney Island, Something happened to somebody and you'd be right there. If you watch some of the videos, people aren't just going there attacking random people, right? So that's why it goes with number, uh, what was it, number two, my business. 
And number three, just, you know, stand away from them conies, man, because um, late night, unless you go there, you got a group of people, you're closer downtown Detroit, and, like, you go to Lafayette, you go to, I, I was going to say American, but Lafayette all day, right? Um, you go to Lafayette, Coney Island, that's all good because it's downtown, whatever. But if you start going to the east side, Coney Islands, on grass shit in Detroit, and it's 1 in the morning, and you pulling up, you got a car, you got some rims on it. Listen, man, don't do that. Like, don't don't pull up in there with a, a Dodge Hellcat or a Scat and it's late night. Because people, you know, they, they looking for their stuff. They in hard times and all that. So, that's why I'm with gas stations. Man, if you look up on YouTube, gas station, gas station, um, you know, I, I can't, I ain't trying to get demonetized, but gas station, you know, whatever, y'all get it, right? So, drop it in the comments for those who don't know. Make sure you like this video, by the way, please, and subscribe. Anyways, um, yeah, you look at so many of these gas stations, you know what I mean, like, all over YouTube, and it can be in any city. It's, it's where it goes down, so get in, get your gas, like I said before, watch your surroundings, watch your back. You know, you get in, you get your gas, get out. Try to fill up in the daytime. Don't be going to gas stations at night. Like, um, I went into a gas station and this guy was like, oh, I like your gold chain. I mean, decent little modest chain, but you know, I ain't like how he was looking. And when I walked out, it was two guys standing by the door, but you know, I carry license to carry, but um, I'll do another story about that soon. But you know, I knew I shouldn't have probably been in a gas station that light on, that, not, that late on eight mile, you know. And yeah, but I, I got out the situation anyways, but yeah, that's that. And number four, you have nothing to prove. Don't try to be tough, don't try to act hard, still protect yourself, don't be soft. You know, walk around, hey, what's up, what's up, bro? How you doing, sis? You know, how you doing? You know, be respectful, but don't be walking around, huh? Like, spooked out and, um, and then that also goes to trying to flex and act tough. I know so many people that be wearing bust down Rolexes. I'm talking $20,000 watches in the slums. Listen, you go to the city, you go to the hood. They will love you if you're respectful, if you give back to the community, if you, you know, get a kid some book bags and just be nice and be a cool person. And also just talk to your neighbors. You know, ask them if you can come to their barbecues and all that. You know, your neighbor... Um, got a barbecue going on. Hey, how you doing? You know, can I, you mind if I come to the barbecue? Cause they ain't gonna invite you cause they don't know you, right? So be cool in there like, yeah, what some people don't understand though is they be so insecure that they try to flex their new cars, they watches, they thousand dollar carnies with the diamonds and they walking around by themselves and they getting they junk took, all that. So it's like, don't be that person. You know, it's hard for me because the more resources that I get, the more cool stuff I get, I want to wear it out. Like, if I got, like, let me see. I ain't really got nothing that people really want off of me, for real, for real. You know what I mean? But, like, let me give you an example. Like, if I had this chain on and it was, like, huge with diamonds. But everybody got chains nowadays, so people ain't really getting their junk took for far as I know. Um, you know what I mean? But it's one of them things where, like, if I get it, just say I really want a Rolex. I really do. And I'm going to probably get a modest one, but when I get one, you're not about to see me just walk into the gas station by myself with a Rolex on. Like, that is not ideal. But you get the point. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe, uh, like this video, and then I'm going to drop more of these. Let me know if you like this. Talk to me in the comments, y'all, because I respond to almost everything. Talk to me in the comments right now. I'm out.